they had to find a perfect match if he was going to have a successful stem cell uh, transplant. And fortunately, they found one, a guy in Germany, but it took two and a half months to find him. This do donor came out of the German registry. Uh, we work uh, with them quite often. Uh, they have a fairly large registry given the population in Germany. So they have about two and a half million donors and I think the population of Germany is somewhere between 80 and 90 million. So we have about three million donors, three and a half million donors here in the U.S. but our population is what, 280, 290 million. So as you see the Germans have a, a large registry for their population. DKMS is one of their sub-registries. They probably have the most active marketing campaign where literally there are uh, advertisements in newspapers, advertisements on the side of the bus, getting the message out there to come join the registry. Stuart in Germany matched up perfectly, so it's, uh, it's really important, the, the match. We hear that he has to drive three hours to um, the, the doctor or the hospital, wherever he donates his blood, and he has to go through a bunch of tests and make sure everything still perfectly matches um, like a week or two before the, the transplant. I think it's been harder on my family than me because I, I don't know, I take it pretty well. I don't, I don't want to get too sad or I get kind of mad. I don't know, I get kind of angry at just like the cancer, I guess. But, I don't know, my parents seem to take it, take it okay. It's tough because they have no control over it at all. I mean, neither do I, but I feel like I have more control. Like, being able to go through the chemo and stuff, they just, I mean, they have to just sit back. And, like, they want to do stuff for me all the time. Like, my mom's always wanting to cook for me and stuff. I'm just like, kind of lay back. I'm still kind of a normal kid. Let's go! It's funny, we just like, when my sister and dad are here, we just like fill up the little doctor room. Just like a little gang. It's kind of overwhelming sometimes, but it's good. It's good having a lot of people around. Come on, gang. Kind of just take it all in and try and always keep a happy face, because I think the happier you are, the easier everything is going to be. I mean, people keep telling us, you know, TJ's so lucky to have you guys because we always joking around with him and in the doctor's office we're always like laughing with him and stuff and it really keeps him happy which will make us happy. We're finding out because we're going through the process but the SCCA or the Seattle Cancer Care Alliance, the Hutch Center, University of Washington, I mean it is um, such an incredible facility. They're nice people, uh, they're attentive. They don't miss anything. The hospital's spotless. Is it just clinic today? Mm. My brother's girlfriend, Ashley, is just amazing. I mean, she's had to learn how to do everything. I take care of his Hickman line. I, like, I flush it and give him his fluids. <laughs> and sometimes he gets antibiotics through it and just clean the dressing. And she's learned a lot about the cancer. She reads all the time information about what's going on and what he should be eating and she's going to be his primary caregiver which will be really good because I think he likes her the best and she's really smart and I know that she knows what she's doing. My heart is bound and though it be you have the sickness and it's not in me. I feel it too from day to day. I watch you suffer as time seems to fade away. You push and pull and keep moving on. You give it all up to kick it all gone. With time so hard and you so weak, I will stand strong. For us, I will speak. For us, I will hold on. No, you won't leave. For us, I will always love you. I will always believe. The way I see it is they, they find a donor that wants to donate stem cells. They give that person growth hormones that bring the stem cells out of the bone marrow into the blood and kind of gets them out to play and once they're out playing in the blood they actually use a, a machine that's kind of like a centrifuge I think they spin the blood itself around it just separates in this little dish and all the cells that my brother needs go on one side and stuff that he doesn't need goes in the other 
you dial in the white blood cell fraction of the blood and you pull those off. And then all the rest of the blood, the red cells, the plasma, the platelets, all the other stuff, you put back in the other arm. And they capture the stem cells in that process and they put them in a, a couple of blood type plasma bags and then this one happens to be coming from Germany and after you know TJ, TJ's had his chemo then they actually plug those cells into his Hickman line and really it's just it's pretty simple it's not painful and then those stem cells once they get in TJ's bloodstream they're out looking for problems and since his problems in his bone marrow they actually go into the bone marrow and actually start to do their thing reproduce um, and start reproducing the the um, platelets and white cells and, and uh, red cells. So it's a pretty amazing process. It's pretty intense if you think about it. Like all the, a lot of smart people combined into making this process. They kind of just bring you back to life with these new stem cells. So it's like they give you chemo like enough to kill you. Like if I wasn't going to get the stem cells, I, I would die. But then they just gave me these new stem cells and they just, they call it like your birthday because it's just kind of like a new life. Today's transplant day. Yay. <laughs> Today's birthday. Call this birthday. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Today's day the, zero. Get rid of all the bad blood, put in all the new good blood. Start a brand new life. There's no cake at this birthday party. And? <laughs> this is a birthday party. Thing. It's going to be as beanie reversible, of course. Yeah, but this, it doesn't Thanks. say the huskies, sorry about that. Okay. <laughs> but it's okay if his head warm. I hope that none of the doctors see this. <laughs> but they will. I know they're husky fans. There's a picture of the cells. TJ's, TJ getting rejuvenated. When I got the cells, the, the new cells, they kind of attacked my stomach because they thought it was like a foreign object in my body. And so the white blood cells were kind of killing my stomach. And so it was just making me nauseous, like super nauseous. So I'd be puking, yeah, like on the hour at least. And I was already nauseous from the chemotherapy and the radiation. So it was just kind of piled up. I actually spent every night with me in the hospital, which is totally priceless because I would have gone crazy sitting in that bed watching TV all night without someone to talk to and take care of me. There's a big need for donors. We've met a lot of families here and cancer patients here who have waited, well, one girl waited two years to find her match. Days, been here for like 26 days. So what is it, the 24th? 24th. Yeah, but I was here for four days before that. 27 days. And a little freaking you only have a short amount of time. TJ's cancer, they didn't give him a long time. A lot of people that get diagnosed only have maybe a year, sometimes they have a couple of years, depending on their cancer, what kind of leukemia that they have. When he gets his temperatures is when you really know he's really scared, you know, and he says things to you like, you know, this is the one thing that can kill me is those temperatures, because they really are. They're his temperature when it goes up is the scariest thing for him. It's TJ Reed in the hospital. Hanging out. I'm ready to go. Right now. 